my name is Adrian DeMarco. I'm a final semester Div 3 at Hampshire College, um, where my Division 3 project is titled Uhai Dance, Translating Memory Through Performance, a Swahili Layer de Memoir. Um, I've been studying with the Five College Language Program um, since my second semester of my first year. Currently, I am um, in Swahili 6. It was definitely easier. Um, <laughs> definitely easier. I mean, um, you know, just having such a strong background and, you know, um, Agnes, who's um, the tutorial teacher, um, has done like such a wonderful job just preparing us for situations like that. And so, um, you know, had I not taken that before, I probably wouldn't have been able to experience as much as I did just because I wouldn't have been taken as seriously. I left in December of 2009 and returned in February of 2010 um, and I studied in Moshi, Tanzania which is um, right near Kilimanjaro actually right at the the base of the mountain. Um, I went over with Cross Cultural Solutions which is a volunteer organization and while I was there I was placed at Kilimahewa Nursery School as a teacher for their six-year-old class. Can you tell me a little bit about yeah, I um, I was actually in charge of the class, which was, I guess, a little unusual, but I think because I had such a strong um, background in the language, I was able to, um, you know, hold my own class. <laughs> um, so I was in charge of the six-year-old class, and there were about, I want to say, on any given day, 25 to 30 students in the class. Um, it was a pretty short day. Um, we got there around 8 o'clock and we left around noon, but um, there was a lot of work. <laughs> um, it's a very different structure than a kindergarten class here in the United States. Um, we worked on writing and spelling and numbers. Um, I tried to do a little bit of math with them, but it didn't, weren't quite there yet. Um, so we worked on writing our names, and then the second half of the day we would do drawing and coloring and um, trying to um, you know, identify our animals and colors and things like that. Well, I had been studying Swahili for a while, um, and I was looking for programs that would take me abroad. Um, because of my focus of study, I was having trouble finding a program um, that would give me a chance to really immerse myself in the culture, specifically the dance and music scene. And so when I found Cross Cultural Solutions, I thought it was a really great, great way um, for me to give my time um, as well as, you know, have a chance to experience the, the culture there. Um, I had volunteered once before um, in the East Africa area, um, in Malawi, where I was distributing food. And so it was really important for me to um, be able to, you know, volunteer again. And so I really wanted to find a program that would allow me to do that. At first, you know, immersing myself in the culture, it was a little, it was a little weird because, you know, especially when you go to a culture where you, um, <clears throat> there's more than just a language barrier, there's actually a physical difference. It, it's very hard to um, not stand out. I guess. Um, <clears throat> and so I think knowing Swahili was really, really helpful in, um, you know, making my way through town. Um, you know, as soon as I would speak to people, they would take me a little bit more seriously. Um, so it was a little difficult at first, sort of shaking off that white tourist feeling. Um, but it, it was a really wonderful experience and it was really eye opening to me, um, you know, I had been to um, an African country before, um, and it, it was very different because it was extremely rural. We were in the middle of nowhere. It was close to a six-hour car ride <laughs> from the airport, and we were we were really, you know, in in the poorest and dirtiest places. And at in Moshi, it was much more populated. There were paved roads. There were cafes and bars and towns and. Um, it, it was just very different from what I was expecting, I guess. 
At first, I was I had a little trouble because, you know, when we learn Swahili, we learn it in a very proper way, and that's not really how they speak, or not how everyone speaks. You know, when you're on the streets, when you're talking to kids, when you're talking to the youth, um, it's much more slang. Um, a lot of English words sort of, you know, blended in. So I'm sure at first, before I sort of picked it up, I sounded very. Um, you know, probably different, <laughs> very, very proper, very, um, probably had a really strong American accent. But um, like I said, we had become close friends with the guys who own Pristine Trails and, um, you know, talking to them and seeing, you know, what a group of, you know, 20 to 25 year olds, like how they actually interact and how they actually speak was really helpful um, because it really helped my conversation and I was able to, you know, um, just be in a situation where, I could like just use pure Swahili. <laughs> um, I would definitely say to study abroad um, without a doubt. I mean, I, I think that my language skills have been strengthened because of that. I think that I have a much better foundation. Um, it just, you, you just can't really understand um, you know, how to speak and how to get around. And, you know, we have these conversation sessions where they set up situations like, you know, you need to find a taxi, you know, ask someone where the taxi is, but then you actually have to go do that. And it's, it's just very different. And, you know, you, you just, you can't simulate that any other way. Um, and even aside from that, if you're studying a language, it's obviously because you have an interest in the culture. And if you have an interest and you have a passion to learn about it, you just have to go do it. <laughs> um, try and use your Swahili as much as possible. I noticed that a lot of people wanted to practice their English on me, and so I kind of had to be stern and was like, okay, you can speak English to me, but I'm going to speak Swahili to you. Um, you know, I feel like I was taken a little bit more seriously, and I was able to get rid of that white tourist feeling. Um, you know, there is this assumption, um, at least where I was um, in Tanzania, I can't speak for, you know, all of East Africa, that um, anyone white is really rich. Um, the students all think that we're the nice teachers and that we're, um, you know, we love all the kids. And I'm a college student. I went over there with nothing, <laughs> you know. And so when you're walking through the markets and people are saying, I'm going to give you a good price, you're like, that is not a good price. Like, I do not have that much money. You know, you, you kind of have to um, be stern and just make it clear that, like, you know, we're not all the same, I guess. That, that was really interesting, you know, the students thinking that we're not going to yell because we just love all the children and we think they're so cute and so we're not going to discipline them. And, um, yeah, I, I really had to learn how to use some, some disciplinary language, I guess with some of the students, so I don't know if that's advice, but it's just something I was not expecting and that kind of caught me off guard a little, so. <laughs>